Thursday, February 16th, 2023, and this is the Talk Film Society podcast. I am your host, Marcelo Pico, editor-in-chief of Talk Film Society. Uh, And with me for this series that I'm desperately trying to keep going, no matter what acts of God happen to me and this show and the website, I'm I'm dragging it to the finish line. That's right. It's my co-host, Marcus Serving. Hello, Marcus. Yeah, big surprise. It's me too. Yeah, hashtag both of us. Hashtag me too, Marcus Serving. Well, now, Marcus, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, just to update people, because I hey, I'm gonna jump into it. Okay, I've had quite a week. Yeah, just get into it. You're cold down there, right? It, <laughs> it's actually hold on. It's actually a nice, clear 64 degrees right now. In Austin, Jeez. Texas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. That that is that is a little chilly. That's okay. The cruelest of fates. Uh, yesterday and today, the most beautiful days on record uh, here in Austin, Texas. Nice, nice out there. You, you, go. I should have went out for a walk. You know, I did go out for a long walk yesterday. I went hiking yesterday at a uh, at a at a park about an hour away. Out west from Austin, had a nice, nice day. I went to the H Mart, uh, got some udon, uh, went to go see 80 for Brady. Oh my God, what a day! Uh, yesterday and then today, very, today very lazy Sunday. Uh, all in all, a wonderful weekend. But before that, yes, I, I <laughs> living in Austin, Texas, this past week, not fun. Um, but that's that's that, that that was my week. That was my stressful week. Uh, now I'm catching up. Marcus is, has been gracious enough to sit down with me. Uh, unless he's standing, I can't see him. Sit down with me this Sunday night, record an episode, knock it out before I fly to New York City next week. Um, but yeah, that's that's been my week. Marcus, how about you? Uh, it's pretty chill over here. <laughs> Not much different. Of course, I was fearing for the safety of you and others that I care about in Austin, Texas. Uh, I spent... Most of the last week uh, in tears. So, so my house is soaked like a sponge. But uh, otherwise, I'd say I'm doing fine. Okay, good. Sorry if, uh, for making you cry that much, Marcus. I'm just an empathetic guy. I just love people. I care about people. That's just me. You know, like, you don't have to apologize for me. I was without power for... I'm sorry for being me. 18 hours. I was without power for 18 hours. I was without internet for like three days. And I'm sorry that that caused you so much trauma, Marcus. Um, that really affected me deeply. Yes. Uh, but I'm glad that it's over. It's over, yeah. I'm glad I mean, that... Like I said, I mean, I, I said there's a winter storm a few days ago. Uh, you know, was freezing for, you know, a week straight. But now it's fucking 65 degrees. It's nice out. It's gene. It's uh, yeah. It, I mean, it was freezing up here too, and we also got a storm. But yeah, I was really scared for you guys down there because <laughs> apparently you don't know how to handle it. At no, all. I blame the government here, the city government. Uh, I blame officials for not being ready for any type of winter storm. Uh, so it's it's on them. Um, so it is. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, uh, we should all uh, we should all go out and vote tomorrow. Yeah, we should all go to, out to, to vote. Get things change tomorrow. Vote for change, folks. <laughs> uh, and where can you vote? You can vote over at talkfilmsociety.com oh. slash TFS Awards. That's right. That's why we're here. This is the awards season series that me and Marcus are doing. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. And more specifically, we, this series is has been made to get the get the word out on on voting this year for the talk film society awards the 10th annual uh go look at the nominees go vote for the nominees pick the winners uh it's it's our oscars it's our version of the oscars in my opinion we do a lot better okay and we're you know what we're gonna talk about some oscar winners this episode but hey right now you're gonna vote for this year's winners over at talkfilmsociety.com slash TFS Awards. There you go. That's how you do it, Marcus. Week to week. What are we doing? What are we doing today? Okay, so this is more of a filler episode. This is not a regular episode. This, this is this is the bottle episode, a la The Fly. <laughs> this is the bottle episode. 
a la the fly uh hey this is this is very in like a a an in our bubble thing literally the bubble of talk film society uh do you know the phrase bottle episode or or when oh, let me rephrase because you just used it so of course you know what it is but <laughs> do you know what that is? <laughs> wait <laughs> let me rephrase when is the uh, first time you heard about that term bottle episode um, I probably heard it referred to <clears throat> in regards to the Friends episode where uh, they are all just like stuck in their apartment. Like, I think the power goes out and they're just telling stories of uh, old episodes, basically, like clip show kind of thing. That makes sense. I, I seem to remember... I don't remember exactly when I heard about it, but I for sure... The well, for sure, the concept of it was cemented in my brain after watching that Clerks episode, the animated TV show Clerks, um, and they do a bottle episode and they make fun of the concept of a bottle episode. Uh, good stuff. Uh, but hey, some people don't know what a bottle episode is. Some people don't know what a bottle film is. Uh, our our sister show, Double Edge Double Bill, they recently did an episode on bottle films, and I saw somebody on Twitter <laughs> got very upset for. For them using that phrase and not explaining it in a tweet promoting the episode. It's like, can't you just click on the episode link and see the description where it lays out what a bottle film is? Anyway, some people don't know these things, Marcus. But yeah, a bottle episode, a bottle film, a bottle situation just means, hey, we're, 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 uh, we're cutting cost here. It's just going to be the two mm-hmm. of us. We're not going to talk about what's happening around us, really. Um, because we're not going to build any new sets for this podcast. No, no, no games, no gold derby game. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. We're, or, or, but we're not going to talk about anything new, you know, because uh, nothing much has happened since the last episode. Um, and also, uh, I'm I'm going to New York, like I said earlier. I'm going to New York City. Uh, uh, in a few days and uh, to see the bright lights, the bright lights, the big city, the shining stars. Um, Take a bite out of the Big Apple, Marcelo's. Uh, uh, watch out, the city that never sleeps. Marcelo's coming to town. Yeah, <laughs> and we're going to talk about a very old movie uh, today in a bit that I forced Marcus to watch, and we're also going to talk about. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, past the Best Picture winners and our favorites from those bunch, all ninety four of them, Oscar Best Picture winners, and we also asked the Discord. Uh, their their picks for their favorite best picture winners and uh, but yeah this will be a very low key episode Marcus uh, before we dig into all that before we dig into our loose uh, topics uh, this episode I, I I've been I've been creeping on you I've been uh, what's this now been peeking over your shoulder what's this now I've been looking at your letterboxed okay uh oh. And Uh-oh. I, I, I want to uh, uh, talk Ooh, about boy. some movies you've watched, or a, or a movie you've watched. Marcus, what if, uh, Marcus boy. welcome to another edition of What's Marcus Been Watching? Ooh, ooh, I'm pulling on my collar. What have you been watching? You're asking me? I, I thought you knew. <laughs> no, this, okay, this is not. You're making me confess to my sins? <laughs> I make, I'm asking you directly because this is opening... This is going to simulate a conversation. You're going to see if I can t- if I tell the truth. You're, exactly. You're... <laughs> I I want to see if you're man enough to tell me to my face <laughs> the truth. No more lies, Marcus Irving. Just the truth, <laughs> Marcus. Spit it out. I watched Babylon. Yes, that's it. Woo, Babylon. The Babylon. Uh, uh, Academy like Award jazz. nominee. Uh, I think it picked up three nominations, didn't it? Three nominations. Uh, best production design. Best. Uh, the rest. <laughs> I'll look it up. Be uh, for us being uh, an Oscar podcast, we should definitely know these things. Um, I don't want them. Yeah. Hey. Good job. Um, okay. So I saw. <laughs> I saw that you gave it a pretty high rating. Okay. Pretty high, yeah. As high as a rating as you can get. Yeah, so you could either... Which you is know, fairly high. For those who don't know, and I'm sorry for... Again, this again, like, bottom episode, I'm going to explain what this is to Letterboxd. So Letterboxd is a social media site 
where uh, film fans log their movies yeah. or just write reviews of movies or uh, comment on people's reviews of movies, uh, make lists, uh, connect. Do you explain with- how it's spelled? Yeah. So it's it's like um, the phrase le- letterbox. Uh, you know, the, 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 the common term of, um, you know, um, how would I even describe that term? It involves aspect ratios and black bars. Um, so it's like fitting a screen to the aspect ratio you desire. I guess that's sort of what letterbox is in the general sense. But hey, they're funny, these letterboxed people. The way they spell it is letter, standard spelling, then B O X D. Forget the E. Oh. <laughs> it just goes right to X D. Oh, that's so cheeky. What is this? The Disney Channel? <laughs> Yeah, that's a better joke than what I had. No, no. D- d- t- tell me your joke. No. Okay. The Letterboxd, uh, yeah, really popular website <clears throat> for uh, for us for us film buffs. For us special film hunks. Oh, you said buffs. Just to hang out, you know. <laughs> I thought you said hunks. <laughs> I said buffs. I, film buffs. <laughs> I got hunks on the mind. Um, okay. So let's just <sighs> just just talk Even about hunks over just there. Fucking talk about Babylon. Hey, hunks. Marcus, cut the shit. I can't picture anything. I, I've got that aphantasia or whatever, where you just can't see anything when you close your eyes. Now, I can't see the apple. I can't see the hot hunks that Marcelo's got behind his eyelids. This is a Academy Award nominee. This is a Talk Film Society Awards nominee. Uh, Babylon. People are buzzing. Thank you, Babylon. People are buzzing about it. I've seen people share clips of Babylon in the last week because, hey, it just hit VOD. And and people are talking about it. I, hey, I'm happy that people are talking about this more than, at least in my feed. Uh, speaking of bubbles, again, another bubble here, film Twitter. At least in my feed, the last few days and the last week, I've seen more people talk about Babylon than in than any other uh, Best Picture nominee this year. Marcus, you know how much I love this movie. I've talked about it. If this, if this is your first episode, listeners, go back, listen to the other episodes of this series. I guarantee you I talk about Babylon at least once every episode and how much I love it. I can guarantee you that. It's on my top 10. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. That's how much I love it. But Marcus, speaking of ratings, you could have given this a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5. You can't give it a 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10. That's all. You can. I could have went to the point to the hat, to the point fives as That's well. That's right. You know what? You could give so, it a point five, a 1. A 1.5, a 2, a mm-hmm. 2.5, a 3, a 3.5, a 4, a 4.5, a 5. That's it. Why are we even doing this? Marcus, get into it. Babylon. Um, <clears throat> very good. All right, let's move on. So, yeah. Titanic. Uh, no, no, this, this no. move. <laughs> this... This movie's wild. This, this movie's, movie's a, wild. A sensory experience for the ages. It's it's drugs. It's sex. It's jazz. It's the Marcus Irving story. Elephants. It's trumpets. It's uh, uh, Margot Robbie. Giant balloons. It's it's so it's so many things. <laughs> But you you gave this you gave this a five out of five a perfect score, which surprised even me. Uh, like I said, I gave it a four point five. Take- yeah, I actually like this movie more than you. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> which is which is which which I'm fuming about. I'm furious about it. This is why I'm confronting you about it. How dare you? Uh, me on Twitter, as a joke, uh, having Babylon as my middle name on Twitter. I mean, I've had that bit going on my page for seemingly months now, right? Marcus, I mean, you follow me mm-hmm. on Twitter. Yeah. I, I haven't I changed do. that since like November, I think maybe, or December. December makes more sense. We're in February now. For God's sakes, how could you like this more than me? Answer that. I don't know. It was just like, whenever I see something, if I see somebody having fun something. with something, when I see somebody having fun with something, I just, I want it. You know, and I come in and I take it from them. You're jealous. Uh, that's just the kind of guy I am. You're, you're, you're you can call it whatever. You can call it whatever you want. I call it winning. And uh, this, is, this is how you win. 
Th- that's how I win is I come in and I steal other people's joy. Yeah. Uh, so that they may have less in the hopes that I have more in relativity to them. Um, well, you win. Babylon. You win because it, my love of Babylon, all of that now transfers over to Marcus serving. So that's official. Babylon's really about cinema, is it not? <laughs> Can we talk? Okay. I want to talk seriously. Can we talk about this? Can we talk about cinema? I, okay. Let's let's cut the let's cut the jokes here for a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's cut the jokes. <laughs> because I want I want to get into it. I do. Okay. People have been talking about the ending of Babylon. I knew it was going to happen from the moment I saw it at a press screening all the way back I can't remember when November December whatever I saw the movie uh, first viewing of it I was confounded by it but I knew that ending would wild people up so the riling didn't happen until this past week because nobody saw this movie in theaters or not enough people saw it right I managed to see it three times in theaters I hey I didn't give it a 4.5 out of 5. Oh, I mean, sorry. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I didn't give it 5 like you. But Marcus, I've seen it more than you. So suck on that. You will always have that. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever see this movie again as many times as you already have <laughs> seen it. Okay. Um, hold on. It says I've seen it four times. How many times have I seen it? Um, I watched it on December 8th. Watched it on December 22nd. Watched it on December 25th. And I watched it on, on December 31st. I'm sorry. I watched it four times. I haven't watched it since it's come home. No, not yet. But you went to it four times I, in the I movie saw it, theater. Yes, to correct myself. Not three, but four times. Uh, and I've been itching to, to 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 buy it on VOD to see it one more time. Because like I said, people have been talking about it. People have been posting videos about it. I want. This is a spoiler-filled discussion now. Folks listening, fast forward about three minutes. Because I want to hear Marcus's unfiltered you know, pure, raw thoughts on the ending of Babylon. So I'm going to set the timer. Three minutes. Marcus, starting now. Let's um, talk about <clears throat> the ending. Yeah, what do you, let's get into it. So, Babylon... What do you want to know about? How did it change your life? It really uh, moved me quite deeply, Marcelo. I have uh, I've given up on my past life and I've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> much it changed me that much no this didn't happen what do you want to know about the ending i like the ending so about the ending a lot uh that was my favorite part of the movie the ending well, well I, I i let's just okay again once again let's cut the shit let's cut the jokes no more joking now that nope that wasn't a joke at all here so you like the ending why in particular did you like the ending manny manuel Seeing himself on the screen, seeing himself be represented, and then having these images of himself and or not himself of of film history. The, the, this this edit here at the end is what I'm really talking about. This 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 montage of film from its inception of a train running over a crowd to to its finale of uh, whatever came out on Netflix today. Uh, I found it very beautiful and moving. I teared up. It, 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 it reminds you why you watch film in the first place. Uh, and it's 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 all done through this kind of chaotic uh, editing where we're only seeing quarter second snippets of a movie here and there, all in this nice little frame, and it's intercut with uh, like flowing liquids almost like the pulp fiction injecting with uh the drugs into the to the arm scene where yeah it, it feels like like the, the heroin into the bloodstream yeah it feels like the blood uh, bloodstream and it feels like it's uh <laughs> and like it, it sounds so fucking dorky and lame to say but it feels like it connected to me as a person who loves <clears throat> the low art of uh filmmaking it, it spoke to me it's incredible it spoke to that part of me uh that that sequence when manny the character uh played by diego calva uh like you said at the end of the movie when he sees singing in the rain and he has this um i guess the audience experiences this like acid trip of like going through um the great 
cinematic milestones of seeing like Jurassic Park, Terminator 2, The Matrix, Avatar, Avatar, clips of these movies, the the bullet in the eye that goes into the moon. I mean, did they even show the 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 the, the train film? You know, the train coming at the audience, the, the, and they showed the, the sinister the train from film. Nope with the the man right the jockey riding the horse yes the thing from nope the 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 jockey on the horse (laughs) yes nope invented that all these images you see along with the music uh the stellar music uh by justin hor uh justin horitz uh all of that bringing together like a cacophony and then yeah like you're mentioning these colors which i believe is like the film emulsion uh but it seems very experimental very out there very 2001 you could say i i need i need experimental shit like that I, i've been i've been getting into this uh collective uh like uh, artist collective uh, known as dream video division um and marcelo you you knew them in their old incarnation of racer trash yes and i know you're a fan i'm a fan I, I, i'm just saying like i because of them i've started to appreciate the art of editing more and like how much you can achieve just through editing an image in an interesting way, editing chaotically or anarch- anarchically, um, I appreciate that more and more as I'm watching more Dream Video Division stuff and like seeing it represented at the end of Babylon in that way. It's like this is the most like brilliantly edited piece of film I've watched in. I, I don't I don't fucking know. I've never seen anything like this in like a major motion picture. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm glad. The end of Don John. <laughs> when Don John takes his dick out, looks at it in the mirror, and says, "No, no, that's not the end of Don John." Oh, that's Boogie Nights. No, the end of Don John is uh, Don Don John and Julia Julianne Moore's character. Uh, they come together, and their faces like uh, it just keeps rapidly cutting back and forth between the two of their faces. Until it reaches like an ecstasy point, and I, I think it's a really beautiful ending. Anyway, uh, similar to Babylon. Kind of. Jesus Christ! Wait a second. So you're bringing up Don John in the positive <laughs> when ta- when speaking of Babylon, the last example of interesting editing. The last example, film. like yeah, of interesting editing in cinema was Don John, directed by what's his name? <laughs> what's his face? Joseph, Joseph Gordon, Gordon Green. Levitt. Sorry. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I don't even know the guy's name. This son of a bitch. I hate that movie. I hate Don John. I don't remember this. All right, I, I, it's fine. Babylon. What? Think. Talk about the end. The ending. The editing. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the sin to spite you, Marcus. I swear to God. Um, this, okay, I like a movie. This mention of Don John. I just remembered. I listen. I don't want to get in this Don John hole, but oh, I don't either. But like, it's. It's it's insane to me that like I think of that movie in the negative and I don't think about that ending at all. That's what's upsetting me right now is I wish I remember that ending because that seems interesting to me. It, it, I, I want to connect with you on that level, on a visual styling and an editing choice, on something experimental from the movie Don John that I have no memory of. So I'm sorry to you, Marcus. I'm sorry to listeners. I've let you down. I don't remember the ending of Don John. Pull out your Blu-ray and uh, watch the last 30 seconds of the movie. Just to wrap up this conversation on Babylon's ending, which I wanted to have, which I think we've succeeded in having. Yeah, Marcus mentioned Racer Trash, which is was a very underground uh, a thing during the pandemic, during the beginning of the pandemic, during the quarantine, uh, of these uh, editors coming together and doing something interesting. And in this case, it was um, just recutting movies uh and putting like vaporware or what's what's the type of music that they play underneath i don't even know it, 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 uh, chill trip hop trip hop yeah vaporwave vapor, vapor, vapor wave. Stuff, yeah, but, yeah 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 i'm not hip enough to know the terms but that collective racer trash like they created some things that i think are astounding like it's 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 just editors just combining all these images of these movies and putting in like color and, 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 you know, basically doing these post narrative experiments in video editing that, that got me excited. And at one point, and sure, this was like the beginning of the pandemic. I was isolated away from a lot of people and I had racer trash 
giving me what I thought was this art that I found so interesting. And my thought was, this is cinema. This is the future of cinema. And I want to see more of it. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, I, I, um, that new collective that they have now, uh, I'm just hearing about. Marcus just told me about it uh, the other day. Yeah, a Dream Video Division is what it's called now. Yeah. And it, it was born out of Race for Trash. I don't know why they ended that old branding. But. I don't know why. It, it, because like it, it seemed like they were gathering fans and getting bigger. Um, I'm not going to guess why they you know they broke up. But Race for Trash at the time was exciting to me. And I'm excited to see what they do now with this new collective. Uh, but anyway, all that being said, I'm not saying like the ending of Babylon is like you know going to going to revolutionize cinema i just think we need more of that because it is very much experimental it is very much again like i i haven't seen this sort of filmmaking in a big budget movie like this that has like gotten me excited uh it wasn't since uh you know last time i had this feeling was don john and like come on i need to have that back (laughs) In theaters, I need more directors exper- experimenting. I'm get that every nine years. Come on, I can't. <laughs> Come on, that long. I can't have a I can't have a Babylon every ten years. I need a Babylon every two years. Um, but anyway, all, all I'm saying is like I think it's a brutal movie. I think it's a heartfelt movie all at once, and that ending really, really does just push that theme forward, and it's beautiful in the end. And it and like I said, it's because it's just so experimental. It's so out there. Even even divorced from any of the characters or the story of the movie, I, I think separating that clip out and just watching that would be like a a cool experience. Um, yeah, and, completely on its own. And then and then you put it back into the movie, and and it becomes tremendously meaningful. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I I recommend for people who have accidentally stumbled onto that clip online because that, that the, the clip of the ending, the, the montage that we're talking about, that's popped up on Twitter, and that's a shame that, hey, our, our favorite guys, the, 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 the same accounts that said, what is Empire of Light, uh, they posted a, a, a tweet this past week. Marcus, did you see this? Marcus, did you? did you? Ca- I think I did, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah. I'm not. I remember reading a tweet of theirs that pissed me off. Yeah, they. I'm, I'll just say they made reference to. I forget the name of their their account. I I'm not even gonna look it up, but they made a joke in quotes about how uh, Goddard committed suicide just so he we, he wouldn't see the ending of Babylon. Yeah. So that was shitty, because it's not funny, and also they're wrong. They have bad taste. They should stop now. They should, and when I say stop, I mean just get out of the business. Uh, account with twenty four thousand followers Back up. that have no business talking about movies. You sons of bitches. Um, but yeah, that's Babylon. That's Babylon, baby. That'll be the last time we talk about it on the show. So hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, go see it and vote for it at the Talk Film Society Awards. If you want, I'm not influencing you. I'm just saying it's nominated. If you want to, you can vote for it. All right, Marcus. There's another movie you watched. Yeah. (laughs) Let's get into that. Because that's part of our big discussion this week. This one, we gotta talk about. This one, we gotta. Hey, baby, it's Oscars season. And we gotta talk about maybe the biggest one of them all. That's right, folks. The biggest Oscar there ever was. The one that you could say is the king of the world. That world being the Oscars. That's right. Marcus saw Titanic. Saw. Saw, saw. Saw, saw. Starring Tobin Bell. Marcus Carrie saw. Elwes. Now, you saw Titanic. T- Titanic. Yeah. I Please tell me I'm not the only one that saw Titanic. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to uh, edit here. Oh, Marcel. I'm going I'm to put in... <laughs> That long rant I went on in the beginning of the episode saying I had no power, uh, collective trauma. <sighs> I, I, I told you that story about how uh, – this is off mic because like for, for once in our lives, Marcus and I talked about something and it wasn't recorded. But the other night, Marcus, uh, you, you called me with some big news. That's very exciting that we'll talk about in the future maybe. Um, and when you were on the line, I, I forced you to listen to me talk about that story um, took my real life story about what happened to me before I saw the movie uh, Knock at the Cabin 
uh, really changed yeah. my life. I mean, what a what an amazing story that was. <laughs> Which I, yeah, the story changed my life. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother saying it on mic, um, but uh, that really just threw me for a loop. That story. Um, I now have to see a, a man called Otto because of this story. Anyway, long story. I'm not going to bother saying it. Um, but hey, I went through it, buddy. Yeah, you know, I've gone through it. I didn't have time to to see Titanic again. Although I did just see it a few weeks ago before I saw Avatar 2, so it's still uh, fresh in saw, my mind. You saw it a couple weeks ago. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, but, you saw it before Avatar 2. That's right. Yeah, but the original plan for this was to have an episode just dedicated to Titanic. But now we're like, let's just do this. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's just have a segment talking about Titanic. I, let's, I talk to, let's talk Titanic. And I, I have pulled up the... Um, the 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 page of that year's Oscars plot synopsis did this <laughs> the plot synopsis of Titanic <laughs> I have up here the 70th Academy Awards uh, page uh, which hosted by David Letterman uh, nope you want to try again who who was it hosted by try again it's easy Whoopi Goldberg nope you're so close one more time oh the the guy uh, Harry met Billy Crystal that's right Billy Crystal Harry met Billy Crystal um, Billy Crystal hosted this. Uh, the reason why we're talking about it, hey, it's coming back to theaters uh, in a few days. Uh, um, I think in time for Valentine's Day, they're rolling it out in Dolby Cinema. I think maybe in IMAX, maybe in 3D, maybe in high frame rate. Uh, in time for the 25th anniversary of of it winning a record 11 Oscars um, uh, on March 23rd, 1998. Still the record? Uh, I think it's tied for the most. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do a quick check, but for my memory, it's tied with I think Ben Hur for the most. You know what? Well, I'm I'm gonna have our researchers check on that, and we'll have an answer before the end of the episode. Ben Hur. Ben. Hur. Ben. Hur. Ben. Hur. Ben. Her. Ben. Her. Ben. Her. Ben. Her. Ben. <laughs> her. That's right. Titanic is tied with Ben Her with the most Oscar wins <laughs> with 11 Oscars. <laughs> Uh, after that, uh, it's a tie for second place. Uh, English Patient, Last Emperor, GG. Uh, those had nine Oscars each. But yeah. Nice try. Titanic, 11 Oscars. So, Marcus, first question to you. When's the last time you saw Titanic? Um, it's probably been since uh, high school, since I've seen Titanic, right. maybe. It's like two years ago? Um. Yeah, just uh, well, I graduated last year. Oh, um, congratulations! Oh, sorry, con yeah. grad congratulations. <laughs> um, and I, <clears throat> um, back then I remember just being swept off my feet by it—the magic of it, the the glory of Titanic. Now, the unshinkable ship they called it. The unshinkable ship, uh, Marcus. So for you, high school, <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, but what, like eight years ago? Let's say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, nah, ten years. Ten years. Okay. Uh, by this point. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Calm down, geezer. Um, so, <laughs> how? Are you, let's let's be honest here, because I hey, I didn't see your rating on this on their box. By the way, I only saw that you saw Babylon. You gave it five stars. I had to talk to you about it on the show. I didn't see what you rated Titanic, but give me your thoughts on Titanic now. Uh, you know, ten years on from last time you saw it. I purposefully. Marcelo, I purposefully didn't rate Titanic. I just logged it. Oh. And I said, Marcelo made me watch this, just in case you went snooping again. Uh, when I said I went snooping, I just saw that one Babylon <laughs> review. <Okay>. <laughs> so, really, I didn't know snooping at all. I just. Well, if you would have went about four, if you would have went about three movies back uh, ahead of Babylon, you would have seen that I saw Titanic. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to say? What do you want? What was the question again? How? Just to reiterate, he 
Here we go. Just, all right. I'm going to say the question again. You ready for the question, Marcus? Hit me. We're talking Oscars here. We're talking the best picture Oscar winners. The best best picture Oscar winners. Now, Titanic, your thoughts on it overall? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Perfect. How about this? Um, here's the question. Here, here's the question. Here's the question. Okay. How did I feel about it now? How do you feel about it now compared to the last 25 years of Best Picture winners you've seen? Let's, let's, let's say that. The last 25 years. Oh. Okay. How does it compare to, let's say, Moonlight or The King's Speech or Chicago or Coda or The Departed or Gladiator or American Beauty, directed by who, Marcus? Uh, directed by James Bond himself, uh, Daniel Craig. Yes. Um, but yeah, talk about Titanic and how it compares to the Best Picture winners of the last 25 years. Yeah, so Titanic. Um, uh, look, uh, a monumental achievement in filmmaking, none can deny. Still? Uh, we, have never, we have never seen anything on that scale. Uh, perhaps we may never again see something on that scale for that type of movie, and that's for sure. Just a just a nice little romance between uh, a kid from the wrong side of the tracks and a wealthy white woman. Um, <laughs> wealthy white woman. <laughs> the, the kid's not white. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so what do I think about it? <laughs> It's an epic. Obviously a very impressive movie. Obviously a very impressive but, movie that, that, uh, that uh, you cannot put into words. You can't. Christ, I was so bored. You're man. bored. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're bored. I was bored. I was, Marcus, kind of, I was kind of over all the corny Marcus, cornball kind of uh, shut have up. I, no, 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 no. Well, have, I was kind of shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh, okay. Just let me finish. I was kind of over all the like cornball, like this ship will never sink. Hee hee hee. That kind of stuff. Like they, they do that type of joke like. 10 times in the first hour and I, I guess I was getting tired of it. I, the, the, sh- the stuff of like them finding the Titanic in present day, it felt like that went on forever. And then the movie finally got to start. Uh, the movie started and, uh, yeah, visually splend splendiferous, but sight for the eye. And, and when we're, and when we're like following Rose and Jack together, uh, really, uh, really sweet, and it's a great love story. Uh, it is, but everything in between—I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to call it bad. <laughs> like that's silly. That's stupid. But you know, frankly, I didn't. I didn't. I was kind of bored by it, man. It's long. It's long. It's three hours and some change. I have found out just now that I'm an expert interviewer because I got the answer I was looking for. I got the truth finally out of Marcus Serving. Uh, you, you you were really just uh, squirming there for a while, not wanting to reveal your your the, the truth behind how you feel about Titanic. But now we all know Marcus, you think it's boring. I guess, yeah. I mean, maybe I wasn't in the right mood that day being forced at gunpoint to watch it. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I sent those people there. I, well, it's okay. Uh, the past is in the past. Uh, water under the bridge. I felt I, I was before this assignment came. <laughs> I was excited for this 25th anniversary of Titanic, and I was like getting amped up by that new release they're going to do. I was like, oh boy, I'm going to go. I'm going to experience the film for the first time in forever, and I'm going to see it in as in a way that could make it as refreshing as possible. Yeah. Uh, instead of just watching it at home. And I ruined that for you by Where saying... I could have went to an IMAX theater and saw it in 3D mm-hmm. and Dolby Vision and uh, with a crowd of people um, chanting, uh, my oh my, how large is that ship? Uh, maybe this is a blessing. Maybe you would have come out of that screening if you had gone and not watched it for this episode. You would have come out of it saying, you know what? feel the same way boring why uh yada yada do you think that would have happened 
I guess it's still possible, but I think I would have had more appreciation for the visual grandeur of it, at least. Now, here's a big question. Are you going to go see it again in a theater? I might. Yeah. I might. You I should. I'm not jazzed about it anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't even seen Avatar 2. And I watched Avatar 1 a few weeks ago, and that one did hold up and blow me away all over again. Well, as soon as you see... Uh, Titanic did. As soon as you see Avatar 2... Uh, we have to do another special episode on it. Uh, like you become very tight. You you've been very tight lipped about Mars about what you about Marcello's about feelings Titanic, Marcello. on Titanic. I like it. I do. I I know. Well, hold on. What's what did I rate it last? I'll look it up. I I had a uh, little James Cameron mini marathon uh, before Avatar two. Um, I I think I've gone on record. This isn't a big surprise to me anyway. I, I'm not afraid to reveal this. Uh, a rewatch of True Lies um, was not good for me uh, because I uh, ca- brave man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that rewatch of True Lies I did uh, showed me how sort of uh, close to bad the movie is. So, 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 sort of, I, it, it's like I'm tiptoeing around. I, I'm kind of like you right now, Marcus. I'm like tiptoeing around the fact I I don't want to call the movie bad. I don't want to call True Lies bad. But there are bad things about it. It's a little dull. I hate saying that. It hasn't aged very well with certain aspects of it. Uh, it's it's cruel in its male bravado at times. Uh, it's racist. It's um, what's another what's another word? There's a, little, there's, a, there's a lot of other words I could call it, but you know I'll stop there. I still give it like three and a half stars out of five. Uh, so that's <laughs> it's not that bad. Uh, <laughs> you loved it. And then I saw Avatar. I rewatched Avatar at home, and I think I mentioned this on the Avatar. Uh, I, I mentioned this uh, when I saw Avatar two for the first time weeks ago on the show. The first Avatar, it holds up barely. I think it's a, it's okay. It's it's. Uh, I I had a great time watching. Yeah, it. I really yeah. Did. It sounds like you had a better time watching it, uh, rewatching it than I did rewatching it, right? And it wasn't until Avatar two that I was like, oh, I finally get this. I now can say I love this world. That James Cameron made you know, in in Avatar, <clears throat> in the Avatar universe. I was when I was rewatching it. I was actually painting while I was watching it, so I wasn't one hundred percent paying attention. It was just kind of in the background. Titanic or Avatar? So maybe that affected it. Avatar. Avatar. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. It. it I mean, uh, and also I'll, I'll say this: I didn't realize that uh, there are three. I, I mean, I knew there were three cuts of Avatar, right? And I. I uh, I know there's a scene where the Navi have sex with her hair, right? Yeah. And yeah. I was waiting for that scene in the version I was watching, but it didn't come up because I was watching the theatrical version. So I kind of want to see the uh, special edition or whatever version that has the hair fucking in it. Um, because maybe that'll improve it. And also there are scenes in the ex- in the extended version where... Good old Jake Sully, you see him on Earth, like in a wheelchair. You see Earthlings, like in a cityscape, and it's it looks interesting. I don't remember ever seeing that. I don't think I saw that version. So maybe I need to see that version. Maybe it'll change my mind. But anyway, uh, what else did I see? I saw Terminator Two. That that held up just fine, but it didn't really blow me away. I don't know. I I, I think overall, like I'm I'm a fan of James Cameron, but. Um, Certain movies of his that I've watched didn't hit the way I wanted them to hit. Uh, then I saw Titanic again at home, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, this movie is solid. I like it better than Marcus. I give it a four out of five. Um, and I do think this holds up a lot more in a theater because I did see this the last time they released it in a theater, maybe five years ago, um, in Adobe Cinema. And that was quite an experience. Like that was amazing seeing it on the big screen. And yes, I I am old enough to say I watched this in a theater when it first came out. Uh, I saw this maybe two or three times in a theater. Um, but yeah, I I mean yeah, I I'm a fan of this movie. I'm a fan of Titanic. Uh, there's some nostalgia in it for sure for me. Um, but I'll I'm I'm kind of with Marcus. Like it's it has its moments. It, it, the, the the scale of it, the 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 I'm grandness of it. I saw the I saw the Titanic when it came out. 
I admit it's a grand epic on a grand scale that looks amazing. But yeah, there are moments where I'm like, uh, ah, like, do we really need? Uh, hey, those 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 winky moments, those jokey moments, Marcus, that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, this this boat's never gonna sink. I I I will say it's more to me. It reads more like historical context and exposition rather than like, you know, uh, a a solo thing where it's like, wait, what's your last name? And Han Solo in the movie Solo goes, I don't have a last name. I'm always alone. Then the guy goes, you know what? You're solo now. Oh, boy. I never finished that movie. That sounds dreadful. Solo, yeah. But no, but I, I, when, when I hear you saying those like moments of, uh, hey, the ship's never going to sink, I think of that moment in Solo for some reason. Uh, but uh, okay. Titanic, not your cup of tea is what I'm hearing. Right, Marcus? Here's a, you know what? I think they uh, – let me punch that up a little. Um, well, I've always been – I've always been kind of a loner. Um, don't really have a name. Oh, you, I guess you could call me, and then we cut to the logo, Solo. That would have been good. But this scene in Solo happens about like an hour in, though. <laughs> That's the title card. That's the title card an hour in. <laughs> Babylon, late title card. Yeah, Babylon, about 30 minutes in, I think. Uh, 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 there, th- here's another spoiler for Babylon. Um, there's, uh, there's some explicit sex in the first, uh, oh, in the first 25 yeah. minutes. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's intense. A lot of body fluids going around. There's a row of kids behind me. Uh, the, the third time I saw it on Christmas day, Christmas night, I think. Um, and, uh, I heard them talking before the movie started in the lobby. They seem hip. Uh, uh they were talking about, um, bones and all. So I'm like, hey, these kids got taste. They sat behind me uh, for Babylon, and as soon as a there's there's a there's there's a, there's, a, there's an orgy scene where I think a woman takes a champagne bottle and sticks it up a man's anus. Is that the scientific way to to um to say it? Uh, I think with his consent, he enjoyed it. After that moment happened, they the kids behind me walked out of the movie. They never came back. So losers. They couldn't handle it. Uh, it's fucking prudes. <laughs> if you can't handle a champagne bottle being shoved up a man's anus for pleasure consensually, I don't know if you should watch movies. I'm with you. I don't think you should be alive. So Titanic. I mean, Marcus is lukewarm on it. I have this feeling. I, I get that sense from you, Marcus. I'm more warm on it. Uh, I I would uh, if if I had time this week, I might uh, I might not be able to go see Titanic three release in IMAX or Dolby Cinema. I might not be able to. I would want to. Like I said, I think the scope of it works better on the big screen. Uh, much like Avatar, I can't imagine. Hey, this is just me. Okay, I can't imagine experiencing the same sort of highs at home with avatar 2 you know uh you know compare comparing to that to see it in a theater uh, seeing in a theater avatar 2 quite experience hard to replicate at home so i think some aspects of titanic same thing kind of hard to replicate that in a home viewing experience any last thoughts on titanic marcus no I'm done with it. You're done with it. Officially, you can just say, you know what, fuck this. Let me ask you this, Marcus. Putting it to bed. Do you think Titanic is better than these movies? What are these movies? The list is as follows. As Good As It Gets, The Full Monty, Good Will Hunting, LA Confidential. Um, yeah. You think Titanic is better than all those? Yeah. Wow. How many of those have you seen? As good as it gets, I I can't remember the rest. <laughs> the Full Monty, Goodwill Hunting, at- Goodwill Hunting. It's better than Goodwill. I, I love Goodwill Hunting, but it, it's better. It's a better movie. Wow, you think Titanic um, is better than Goodwill Hunting? That's interesting. That's 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 a take. Do you not? I've never seen Goodwill Hunting, so I can't answer that. <laughs> I I can't. I uh, refuse to. Uh, go, go on. Uh, what, what were the other ones? There were more than three. L.A. Confidential. L.A. Confidential. Yes, I think it's a better movie. I've only seen half of that movie, so I wouldn't know either. Um, I like Confidential's good. It's not the full Monty. I haven't seen it. Me neither. Uh, as good as it gets, yeah, I see that Titanic better than as good as it gets. Um, as good as it gets is good. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, a it's a charming solid. movie. Yeah, 
I haven't seen that since I was a kid, actually. As I mean, I mean, kid back in 1987. Uh, no, no, no. I saw that like in the early 2000s. So when I was in high school, I haven't seen that since high school. I have never a memory of it. So yeah, so you okay? So you do believe you're with the Academy here? The Academy chose to reward Titanic, the Best Picture, over those uh, nominees in the Best Picture race. Um, of course. Yes. So yeah, uh, if you don't if you don't know what's going on, I'm going to go through some of these categories for the seven for the seventieth Academy Awards. The Titanic. Uh, they didn't sweep. They just got a lot, of, a lot of awards. They were nominated for fourteen awards. Titanic was. They won eleven. So, James Cameron won for Best Director over the directors of The Full Monty, Google Hunting, LA Confidential, and The Sweet Hereafter. Uh, Adam Egoyen, he got nominated for that. He lost to James Cameron. Of course, nobody uh, was nominated uh, for Best Lead Actor in Titanic. Uh, DiCaprio was famously snubbed from that category. Marcus, your thoughts? Is DiCaprio worthy of a nomination? Should he have gotten one? Uh, Over who? The nominees for lead actor at the 70th Academy Awards are Jack Nicholson for As Good As It Gets, Matt Damon for Global Hunting, Robert Duvall for The Apostle, Peter Fonda for Yuli's Gold, and Dustin Hoffman for Wag the Dog. Uh, get out of there, Hoff. Let's, 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 put a... let's put DiCaprio in there. Let's put the caps in there. The caps. Interesting. You think uh, Peter Fonda is better than Dustin Hoffman? In uh, interesting. That's a good. That's a hot take. Jack Nicholson won the award for lead actor. Is, is he? Is he a bad person? <laughs> no. Peter Fonda? I don't know. <laughs> I know Dustin Hoffman is. Dustin Hoffman. Yes. Uh, uh, Google Dustin Hoffman, folks. You'll find out what we're talking about. No, Peter Fonda is fine. I'm just making fun. I, I've never seen Yuli's Gold. I don't think you've seen Yuli's Gold. Uh, uh, Peter Fonda. How do you know what I have or haven't seen? <laughs> oh, fine. Marcus, have you seen Yuli's Gold? No. Okay. Best lead actress. You know who was in this race? Kate Winslet. Here are the other nominees, though. <laughs> Helen Hunt, as good as it gets. Helen Bonham Carter, The Wings of the Dove. Julie Christie, Afterglow. Judy Dench, Mrs. Brown. And, of course, Kate Winslet, Titanic. But who wins the award that year? Do you know, Marcus? Kate, uh... I uh, know. Helen Hunt for as good as it gets. Helen. Helen Hunt. Hunting for that Oscar. Hunt for that gold. She got it. Uh, best Supporting Actor. No Titanic nominees. But Robin Williams got it for Good Will Hunting. Best Supporting Actress. Uh, let me run through the nominees. Kim Basinger, Like Confidential. Joan Cusack, In and Out. Mini Driver, Good Will Hunting. Julianne Moore, Boogie Nights. And Gloria Stewart, Titanic. As Old Rose. Joan, Joan Cusack. You think you think she won? Sure. No, Kim Bassinger. LA Kim Confidential. Bassinger. Kim Bassinger. LA Confidential here. <laughs> Kim Bassinger. Kim Bassinger. Uh, so, best <laughs> screenplay, Titanic, not nominated for the screenplay category. Uh, so James okay. Cameron, you know, I guess wrote it. Goodwill Hunting won. Wrote a, I know. wrote a terrible script. Yes, Goodwill Hunting won the for the best moment of my life. The best moment of your life is what you just said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when Matt Damon and Ben Affleck won the Oscar for Best Screenplay. Yeah. Uh, best Screenplay based on previous material. LA Confidential won that one. Uh, let's see. Na, na, da, da, da. Best Original Score. Titanic. James Horner. Uh, best Original Song. My Heart Will Go On. Titanic. Best Sound Editing. Titanic. Best Sound. Titanic. Best Art Direction. Titanic. Best Cinematography. Titanic. Best Costume Design, Titanic. Best Visual Effects, Titanic. Best Film Editing, Titanic. But it lost Best Makeup to Men in Black. What else did it lose? Uh, I'm not going to look it up. Lost some other ones. So Titanic, it swept the Oscars, did win all the awards, but it won just enough. Now, speaking of Best Pictures, did we ask our Discord members what their favorite Best Pictures are? And also, didn't we ask the same question of ourselves? Marcus Irving? I believe we did. Now, do we want to go to the Discord first, or do we want to just reveal our picks? For... I think, uh, historically, we present our side first. Uh, all right. Uh, Marcus, why don't you go first? So, the question that we asked ourselves is, 
what are our favorite best picture winners our top five our chris rock top five marcus i uh so i went through a list of best picture nominees i've only seen like 20 or winners i've only seen like 20 something of them (laughs) so i'm not picking from the biggest list uh it was hard for me to uh, even pick five that i like really (laughs) 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 or like enough to put on a top five (laughs) this is great (laughs) (laughs) number five chicago number Chicago, hey, I'm Chicago, we here. got the hey. dancing, we got the deep dish pizza, we got the killing Richard Gere. Mad on here, Chicago. Number four, the return, the king is back, baby. Hey, yo, return the king to us, Lord of the Rings. Hey, hey, hey we kill the orcs. Uh, number three, we gotta, we gotta hush up now. <laughs> hey, shut your mouth. We gotta we gotta be we gotta hush cause the lambs are coming by. Hey. We have to be silent for the lambs. What are you eating my leg over here? Get out of here. <laughs> and Give number me some two of that Keontae, we, you son of a bitch. Number two, out of the out of the way, old man. This ain't no country for you. It's a young man's country. No country over here. Javier Bar damn haircut. And number one, we're Philadelphia. Hey, we love Rocky. We love cheese steaks. Rocky. Cheese steak in Philly. We, we love stairs, baby. We love running up those stairs every single day as a community. Rocky Balboa. That's right. Or I should say Rock. Hey. hey. Uh, it's hey. me, Rocky. Hey. hey, it's me, the Tulsa King. <laughs> Are you telling me? I, hey, you, I, you I did 25 about? years in the slammer, and I come back to New York City, and you kick me out? You t- you, you put me in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Nothing's in Tulsa. Martin Starr's in Tulsa. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with Martin Starr <laughs> running a legal weed place. <laughs> that's right. Marcelo watched the first four episodes of Tulsa King. Wow. So that's a great top five, Marcus. Lovely. Chicago, Return of the King, Silence of the Lambs, No Country for Old Man, Rocky. Um, now, as for me, I've managed to see 44 out of the 94. Uh, I believe that math is correct. I, 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 I did a quick search before we recorded. Again, this is a half-assed episode. Sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Have you figured that out yet? I promise. Okay, listen. It's been a, it's been a week. All right? It's my fault. Uh, next episode, n- next row episode we record, I promise it's going to be solid. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so, so good. But this episode, it's fine. <laughs> My top five. Here we go. Number five. I'm going to go with good old Rocky Balboa. My number five. Wow. He, we both had Rocky. I mean, it, it's hard to say. Uh, that like I mean it's it's just there's a reason why they're still making Rocky movies or should I say ro- movies in the Rocky universe you know Creed Creed three is coming up and I'm uh, it's the best sports movie ever made Rocky I I, I I I believe so you know controversial I think for me to say Rocky is for in my opinion the fifth best uh, best picture winner but I'm gonna say screw you if you're saying that to me you're saying that to Marcus too we have good taste. I think it's the best best picture winner. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You have it at number one. I have it at number five. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I I don't know if I agree with Marcus actually. Hey, that's... fuck you! You're supposed to link the bridge on the river Kwai. <laughs> ah, movie was fine. It's no Rocky. Uh, number four. I have a feeling our list may line up a little. Uh, but not not here though, because I'm gonna say I'm gonna go I'm gonna be brave and say. The Godfather. That's right. Hey! The Godfather. <laughs> really brave. <laughs> hey! Give me... Pass me over that calzone, baby. Give me give me the mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Hey, take the cannoli. Give me the gravy. <laughs> give me the biscuits. Leave the gun. That's, that's my number four. Uh, my number three. Oh, boy. 
Oh boy, that's right. It's Lawrence of Arabia. Hey. Wow. <laughs> All right. Larry, what you doing down there in Arabia? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> we need you back home. <laughs> oh, look, I'll say this about Lawrence Arabia. Real serious. I yeah, talk, talk a little bit about I, I, that I've one. seen it many, many times, but it wasn't until I saw it like on the big screen at like uh, uh, at um, it's like the Titanic effect, right? You see it big, you get more out of it. I saw it big at like one of those TCM uh, special events at um, at a Cinemark, I think. On the best screen, on like on on that like RDX screen or whatever specialized screen they have, like for 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 big events like that, it was amazing, it phenomenal, uh, outstanding. Uh, so yeah, and I saw, and then after that, I saw it like at home again recently, semi recently, and still was blown away by it. So yeah, of course it's a classic. I went out, on a, I went out on a limb putting that on number three. My number two, it's. No Country for Old Men. Yay. Oh, oh, wee, yo, wee, yo, wee. Those co- I think it's the only time that, uh, from my memory, the only time that my favorite movie of that year won Best Picture. Uh, at least for now. We'll see what happens this year. But No Country is my favorite movie of 2007. It won uh, the Oscar for Best Picture. So funny how that happens. And my number That's one. So funny. Actually, I lied. It, it's happened twice. The departed. It, it yeah yeah it's the yeah my guess what the fuck you just jumped ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it I was about to say the departed. <laughs> that, how how'd you do that? How'd you do that? <laughs> I, I just knew. I knew yeah. you love that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I do love that movie. Yeah, so t- 2006, 2007, two years that my <laughs> favorite movies of that year won Best Picture. They were on a roll for a couple of years there. They were on a roll for two years. And then they just went downhill after that. Uh, but yeah, I, I love The Departed. I've got a record saying that's my favorite Scorsese movie. It's a huge reason why um, I'm so into the Oscar race now. Uh, I, initially, it was Titanic because my grade school teacher at the time was talking about Titanic way too much and kind of like told us no he he shouldn't force us like how i forced marcus to watch titanic she just like highly highly suggested we watch the oscars that year and i did as a little kid who wanted to you know uh uh you know uh you know uh, those little little shit you know i should have just like shined apples and put her on her desk i wanted to appease this teacher so i did see I, i did see that oscars i was hooked and then I, I watched the ceremonies uh, uh, ever since. And the Departed ceremony and the, the Departed winning Best Picture, fantastic. It was like the pinnacle of my Oscar watching. Because a movie I loved that I really just was rooting for won. And I was happy Scorsese won an Oscar. I was happy uh, about the, uh, the other Oscars it won. Thelma Shoemaker won another Oscar, I believe, for that movie too. Uh, yeah, great year. Great movie. So yeah, that, that's my number one. The Departed. All right. I love it. I, I love The Departed. There's a rumor going around that there might be a new 4K release of The Departed this year. Fingers crossed. Hey, I'll be a happy camper if that happens, camper. You can call me Whitey Bulger because I'm going to have a bulge in my Some. pants from seeing <laughs> The Departed in 4K. <laughs> yeah. All right, The Discord. Let's close this show. Uh, the Discord. The we Discord. solicited this exact same question from everybody in our Discord. How? Discord's a hey, fun community. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Marcus? If I could have just want... done it. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to join, though, the Discord, how, how would I go about doing that, though, Marcus? Come into our Discord, uh, talkfilmsociety.com slash Discord. Thank you. Um, yeah, we ask these nice little fun little questions, and then we'll talk about them, okay? Our, uh, we asked everybody right. your top okay. five Deal best picture winners ever. All right, Ben Miller answered first, right away. Like, not even, like, two minutes later. Just, no, like, right there. He already right had there. it on hand, and yeah. he cheated. He was he was waiting for us to, to say this actually he was uh, he was on high alert uh, here I'll, I'll read I'll read Ben Miller's picks uh, Marcus please 
Number five, No Country. Hey, No Country. That's 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 what they call a hat trick right there. Three for three. Three for three. Uh, number four, All About Eve. I have not seen it. Uh, number three, Schindler's List. Classic. Number two, Casablanca. Number one, The Godfather Part Two. Those are his picks. What? Hold on. The Godfather Part Two. That's a sequel. Whoa. Sequels are supposed to be worse than the original movies. Marcus, I have a fun fact. Do you want? So there are only three film series where the original and the sequel each got Best Picture nominees. Can you guess all three? The the remake and the the what? There are only three film series where the first movie and the second movie in the series each got Best Picture nominees. First and the second both got Best Picture nominees. Yes, three film series that accomplished this. Um, did Lord of the Rings? That's one. The thematic trilogy of uh, the Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. <laughs> no, and... the other ones. No, let's end this. The other ones were The Godfather and Avatar. Oh wait, wait. but I knew. Fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. I got the one that wasn't. Fuck off. I know. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Who's next? You, you got the next one. Uh, let's, BB, let's uh, B, sorry, Bix, B6421. They say, The Sting, No Country for Old Men. No Country. Uh, the Godfather, Amadeus, Parasite, they're number one. Parasite, no country, I, I, everywhere. I will say Parasite, no, yeah, No Country, hitting it big with everybody. No Country, I will say, oh, sorry, Parasite, I will say, almost came close to knocking out Rocky. At my number five, which would have been appropriate because, you know, Rocky loses in that first movie. So what if Rocky lost out on making my top five? That's you know true. what? That's true. I'm going to make it happen now. Rocky, you're out of here. Parasite, you're uh, at my number five. So that's what makes you special, Rock. They knock you down knock and you, you just out. keep getting back up for more and you're on that's, Creed three already. That's why I love you, Rocky. All right. Cool. Jima is next. Uh, they're ranking in no order. I guess not ranked. Their five movies are <laughs> Godfather <laughs> One, No Country for Old Men, Unforgiven, Spotlight, and Platoon, which I think is a Platoon. I think it's a reference to Splatoon. <laughs> uh, all right, who's next? How do you Marcus? even know what that is? No Country is still I everywhere. I know what Splatoon is. Uh, we got the Bat Who Laughs. They say Silence of the Lambs, Amadeus, and The Sound of Music are the only three Best Picture nominees they've ever seen. That's uh, cool, man. I'm not mad at you. You do You're what cool. you gotta do. You're it good. seems like it seems like you have a love of movies there somewhere in your heart. So keep keep aiming for that star. Uh, all right, not the who's Tommy, Thomas Mariani. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. B six B six four two one replied on his own list and said my number five slot v- vacillates between Casablanca and The Sting. Today is a Sting day, but one flew over the cuckoo's nest is right there too. Okay, so we wanted to. Mention that cheater. Thank you. <laughs> we asked for five. Not the who's Tommy. Tommy Amarinara. Double hedge. Far. Double bill boy. Double hedge. Rocky number one. Uh, this they're they're not nobody put numbers, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, after, you know what? Yeah, uh, nobody ranked these uh, after this, so it's just they're unranked. It's chaos here. Rocky, best years of our lives. I've never even heard of it. Uh, Godfather Part 2, Parasite and Moonlight. First mention of Moonlight. Moonlight's a great movie. Moonlight's amazing. Parasite, great movie. Best Years of Our Lives. I don't think that's real. <laughs> I think he made that up. But hey, he's with me on The Rock. Uh, Manish Mathur, another... Friend of the site. Society. Friend of the site. <laughs> <laughs> tell, t- tell me about Manish, Marcus. Yeah, uh, Manish, he's a friend of the website. Uh, <laughs> host of... Uh, queer and now and uh the i love you pod um it pod to be you it pod to be you uh now this is a running great bit friend where, of the site. <laughs> this is a running bit where marcus i think pretends to not know who people are <laughs> it's a running bit of how much knowledge can i spout out at once about <laughs> one person and like I, for some reason i always forget the name of his fucking show <laughs> and it 
And the best thing about it is we know that Manish listens to these. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for doing this to me and to Manish. No, no. I, I, I love Manish. We both love Manish. Manish, we want you on the show. We want you we as a guest Manish. on the show. love Manish. Manish, come on. Pitch us come your on, episode. Come, come on. on. The sh- <laughs> we don't, you don't have to pitch anything. Just come on and we'll talk about it. You have anything. to pitch, pitch it to us, all right? No. Show us that you <laughs> want it. Just come on. You just come on. <laughs> Who cares? We literally talked about nothing for like 90 minutes <laughs> on this show. <laughs> For God's sakes, we're just reading things <laughs> off a list now. Manish says, Titanic, All About Eve, Moonlight, The Signs of the Lambs, <laughs> and Rebecca. Of course, he had to put in some Hitchcock in there. The first one brave enough to say Titanic. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll love what you just said about Titanic earlier. That's bored, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's move on. What's Who's next? Pablo. Pablo. Shape of Water. Godfather. Nice. Casablanca. Nice. Platooner. Nice. Moonlighter. Nice. Sam shot first. Sam Van Heron. Friend of the site. Friend of the site. Of course he goes. I mean, co-host of um, uh, Deep in Them Guts. Uh, Going Helms Deep. <laughs> uh, with me and See, other you can't, people. See, you can't always remember. Uh, can't, <laughs> can't, can't, you be- can't you believe it with Keanu Reeves? <laughs> uh, Sam says Return of the King, of course. Moonlight, Signs of the Lambs, Lawrence of Arabia, and The Sting. A movie I don't remember caring for. I'm sorry, Sam. All right, next. The Sting is kind of like what a scorpion does. Jay on, McMillan on is back. says The Sting. Marty. No. Marty. Uh, that's one of McFly. my mom's favorite movies. Uh, French Connection. That's a good one. Uh, Hurt Locker. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Maybe the most sophisticated list yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think he outdid us all. He, he also goes, honorable mentions, Godfather 1 and 2 and Million Dollar Baby. Million Dollar Baby, I don't remember fondly. Um, I like but- it. I think it's good. I think it's one of Clint, Clint Eastwood's uh, better movies. Clint Eastwood is great director. Man. Clint Eastwood is 92 years old. How does that make you feel? And may he may he keep directing for the next twenty three years. I you know not to make this a complete tangent because we do need to wrap up this episode soon because Marcus needs to leave. Um, I uh, uh, somebody shared a tweet of Clint Eastwood, current day Clint Eastwood, uh, checking out these new um, uh, uh, action figures of Clint Eastwood um, uh, oh. characters, uh, memorabilia, I should say. To make it more fancy, they're not just action figures, and yeah, and there's a picture shared of him, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, he's he's he looks old. Of course he's old. I looked up how old he was. He's 92, and as far as I know, Cry Macho. I hope not. Might be his last movie. I hope it's not his last movie. Uh, he didn't have anything in the can. No, I. That's why. That's that's what I was looking up. I'm like, I wonder what's next. He's I, been like constantly working for like the last. 15 years or so like making movies and here's another running theme we like to shit on warner brothers and we can definitely shit on it now because last i heard the new exec what's his name zasloff um i think he might have said like his first month he was there as the head of uh warners he's like why are we his words why are we wasting money on clint eastwood movies we don't owe anybody any favors so fuck him. <laughs> that guy can go that straight is, to hell. Uh, that is dire. That is just depressing. Because no matter what, no matter what you think of Clint Eastwood, politics aside, a legacy of amazing films, he should be able to direct into his old age whatever he fucking wants as an octogenarian or what's what? What are ninety year olds like? Nonagenarian. Nonagenarians. I want to see a nonagenarian. Uh, in a three-way with like two beautiful women, um, like, <laughs> like like you know, like I saw him in in the Mule as an octog- octogenarian do that. Anyway, the Mule's good, man. I hey, I liked Cry Macho. Cry Macho was was pretty good. I haven't seen it. I, I want to see it. Yeah, I think I think it's a solid movie. And God forbid it's his last movie, but if it is, it's a solid way to go out. But I want him to make more movies, though. That's that's the thing. Okay, that's our Clint Eastwood controversial takes <laughs> i hope people take that <laughs> well finally it's my turn right yep uh, we end off here jessica scott thank you jessica her picks are it happened one night casablanca all about eve the apartment and of course 
Let's say it together. No, no country, country for old men. men. Well, Lovely. That's the we should have just talked about no country this episode instead of Titanic. You know what? We got a new we got a new most cultured list representing many different film eras. Jessica, you win. Jessica, yeah. Uh, in case you don't know, each episode we declare a winner. Yes. Uh, and Jessica Scott is the winner of this episode. So, uh, Jessica, call in the show. Uh, tell us the phrase that pays, and you'll you'll get uh, you get your prize. <laughs> good job, uh, Marcus. Speaking of good jobs, thank you. You did a great job this week. Uh, oh, I, mean, I did amazing. <laughs> I, I, know, I know I did. I really knocked this one out of the park. <laughs> it's it's it turned out fine. It turned out great. I mean, not fine. It turned out good. It's a good episode. It's a good episode. <laughs> and, and you too, bad but brother. <laughs> you almost call me Ben. You too, Ben. Ben. <laughs> okay, uh, b- before we wrap up, so next week's episode, like I said, I'll be out of town. Uh, we're not going to record. Going on vacation week. up to the Big Apple. Going to see yeah. the Statue of Liberty. Walk, tread the boards on the way, Great White Way. Hey, I'm going to leave this in because this it's going it's going to happen. You know, uh, I hope it all works out, but I might see an Oscar winner on stage on Broadway next week oh my gosh okay um you know what i'll save it for when we come back and i'll talk about it so that's, that's a i'm tease. very curious um and yeah plugs uh talk film slash tfs awards vote in the talk film society awards uh i'll say this the southland tales show that me and marcus uh host it's coming back uh i don't want to confirm the dates but they're pretty much confirmed it's gonna happen uh we're working behind the scenes on it. Marcus is mostly. Marcus is running that ship. And we're going to record some episodes soon on that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Oh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash Talk Film Society uh, for bonus episodes. Marcus, words? Many were said today. Many words were said. Do you have any last And ones? all will be forgotten. <laughs> what? Is, are you putting a curse on me? flowing like tears in the rain <laughs> gunk blader follow him marcelo babylon pico <laughs> follow me on twitter uh that's it if marcus you have no last words th- this is your last chance to have last words no last words all right thank you as always uh have have a have a have a good week folks please because i didn't have one i hope you do I think Marcus also shares that same sentiment, right? It's a show over. <laughs> I see you at the movies. No, never say that. All right. <laughs> <laughs>